breaking news, we have discovered four new species of superhuman looking animals on the planet, the salt. So the first species that was discovered was the hexanake. So this basically looks like first a snake body with a spider-like head. And as you can see, there's arrows that point to different parts of the snake that are important, such as the snake body, which is used for curling under rocks when it stays overnight, and the extra long spider-like legs for crawling onto uh, rocks and certain plants. Now these spider-like legs that have been found are this snake that has been found these spider-like legs are actually very strong as these, um, when climbing up rocks, uh, these are the only things that are supporting the snake um, and the hexanake actually as they climb up the rocks. There's also included there a rattle for uh, other animals. Um, so it basically it's like a warning sign. So if someone starts approaching a hexanake, uh, if a predator or an animal starts approaching it, it will start rattling just like a rattlesnake does currently. So the evolutionary history. So basically on the planet, imaginary, uh, snakes and spiders used uh, dis different enzymes to bond together and uh, they tried to help each other survive because if they basically combined their survival traits and what like allowed them to be so successful, they would basically outcompete their other species of just spiders and snakes. So eventually using their enzymes, spiders bonded to the head of snakes. And eventually this resulted in a permanent change in the genetic information and the hexanake being created. Basically, um, the spider will do the jobs of uh, feeding, uh, crawling around. Uh, basically, it serves as the mind uh, since they are smarter than snakes. And basically, they, can, they have venomous, they're poisonous, and they're pretty dangerous species. So what does the uh, hexanake eat? So we found uh, that the hexanake eats a lot of other insects and uh, small species relative to its size. I say small, but like the hexanake is about six feet long we measured. And uh, if any animal approaches it from the air, hexanake is able to eat and capture these flying animals as it does have a way to spray its poison at these animals. So a hexanake eats a lot of insects. It can stand up tall like a cobra and it can spray poison at other animals. So, uh, apart from eating anything, it usually eats stuff that's on the ground, on the desert biome, uh, something along the ground. Um, it, is a, it is able to swim, as the spider-like legs will retract under its head, and it will use the uh, tail and the whole snake body to prepare, uh, propel it like a flagella. And it is able to swim if it comes across a rubidium river, but... It usually roams around on land and tries to find uh, rodents, not really rodents, but like small animals and yeah, some rodents. So how does it eat? Well, first, the snake body is used as a constrictor, which means it wraps around and eventually squeezes so hard that the animal that it squeezes is not able to breathe. And while it does this squeezing maneuver to kill it faster, it has very potent venom. Now, these venoms are huge poisonous fangs that hang out of the spider-like head. And these venoms, uh, once injected into a person or something, uh, the prey will die within 10 seconds. Um, no matter how much venom, just a little drip of venom is able to kill any type of species, uh, any size uh, within 10 seconds. And basically, the smaller the body of the prey or the smaller the thing that is bitten is the quicker it's going to die. So it's a very potent venom. Uh, the six foot long body of the snake actually allows it to also constrict and uh, give the spider like head a clean bite. And um, yeah, uh, it also has another method of um, catching its prey by squirting the poison uh, I also mentioned earlier, which is uh, pretty cool uh, because uh, like a cobra, it stands up on its kind of like body and it's able to out of these little pores inside of the fangs, it's able to squirt these uh, huge, basically, streams of poison at its enemy. And it usually hits it 
somewhere in the eye or somewhere near the mouth where somehow that poison is intaked by the air animal and it is able to basically poison them and thus kill it and eat it. So where does it live? Uh, hex snake lives under rocks and biomes. As you can see in this picture on the bottom right of your screen, you can see a bunch of uh, rocks and uh, little crevices that a snake's body can coil up under. Now they are a very independent species and abandon their young as soon as they are born. So you basically these species are very independent. They like to stay on the move. So basically they have incredible amounts of stamina as they can keep on the move for a long time. But if they do need a rest, they will reside to these little rocks and desert like um, places. The social structure and the mating behavior. So as we mentioned before, this is a very independent species of snake. So the social aspects of it and the mating, asp of it, mating aspects of it is not going to be too serious as the only time the hexanake is social or interacts with other members is during the fall season, which is when the mating behavior happens. So the species, hexanakes, will mate in the fall because then the females will carry the young inside their bodies during the winter where it is cold in the desert and it gets very cold. And then in the spring... They hatch inside the mother and eat their way out. The mother soon abandons them because it's a very independent species and they are basically left to survive on their own. Now, the small hexanakes are able to be consumed by these other birds uh, that are the prey around the desert area and other air animals and like rodents that are larger than them. But once they grow in size, uh, they do once again become apex predators and no one likes to feed on these hexanakes. But uh, the mother of course, recovers the part of skin as they have regenerating type of skin. So the mother is able to recover the skin that she lost while the um, babies ate their way out. And um, so the way that mates are chosen is once again has to do with the squirting of the poison. So these little uh, pores inside of the fangs, basically if there's two, um, the female obviously chooses the mate. And if there's two males competing for a female, then... The female will ask the each male to basically uh, squirt its poison as far as they can, and whichever can squirt the poison the farthest shows that it's able to defend against air attack the best, which is thus why the female will choose the uh, the snake, the hexanake that will can s spray the farthest. Uh, so the interaction with other species is also, once again, very minimal. Uh, since it's very independent, um, there is a parasitic species of worm that live, lives in the crevices in the desert biome on this planet. And what happens is sometimes when hexanakes uh, decide to rest, uh, they, come, they sometimes reside into a crevice in a rock where these species of worm are there. And while the hexanic sleeps, since it's a uh, very strong stamina and it keeps on the move for a long time, it kind of goes into a dormant and very deep sleep. And while it goes into this very deep sleep, these species of worm can uh, burrow themselves inside of the skin of the hexanic without the hexanic even realizing. And soon after a while, the hexanic will die from the inside out because these worms will eat every single cell body and they will kind of feed off of the hexanake and thus that's a parasitic um, type of interaction but apart from that other than the mating behavior and uh, these worms uh, hexanake really does not have any mutualistic um, species that it basically mutualistically interacts in because if any species tries to e even interact with the hexanake hexanake will not hesitate to bite as they've been shown to be very aggressive New information about the species Sharkus gigantus has been revealed to the public. Uh, its evolutionary history consists of it starting out as a mid-sized aquatic hunter, but as time passed, its genes mutated and allowed it to grow longer and increase in size with the correct nutrients. Its max length is about 65 to 70 feet. It is the apex predator of the seas, and its waste provides nutrients for primary producers to grow so... The food pyramid does not collapse within itself. Uh, the Sharkus gigantus has a wide variety of prey, but it typically likes to eat smaller sharks uh, or fish that are tuna-like. Uh, but once a year, it comes to the surface to hunt a semi-aquatic animal, much like a seal. This animal is, in fact, the Sharkus gigantus' preferred prey. Uh, Sharkus gigantus is... A hunter 
it is an animal that is so well adapted to hunting that even at its large length and size that it's completely silent and is perfectly camouflaged with the environment that it hunts in. Its bite force is very strong and typically once an animal is caught in its hold, it cannot get away. Uh, Sharkus gigantis lives in the depths of the ocean and almost never surfaces in the photic zone. Almost all that is learned about this animal is learned through submarine exploration. Uh, Sharkus gigantis interactions with other creatures really only consist of it hunting other creatures or for mating purposes but mating is only done for strictly reproductive purposes and after mating the male abandons the female uh during mating the shark is gigantic pretty much abandons the female but when the female gives birth it al- it always abandons the pups as well because they already have the instincts to survive. The only thing that resembles a social class with the Sharkus Gigantis is that um, males compete in a fight to see who gets to breed and pass on their genes to the females that are available. But that is it for a social structure or interaction between Sharkus Gigantis and its fellow members of the species. The next superhero species are called the troponators, also known as the trops. The troponators have a very unique appearance to that of the other species because they evolved from humans. The troponators have a long tail used to swing from tree to tree and claws to dig tunnels and cut out their food. The species also wear goggles that give them excellent sight and night vision. The protective armor they wear is a part of their body and grows as they do. They reach an average size of about 180 pounds. The troponators evolved from humans that were exposed to radiation in the tropics millions of years ago. While adapting to their harsh new environment, they grew tails, claws, and thick skin. Because of their tails, they are able to easily navigate their way around the rainforest. This phylogenetic tree shows the evolution from the gorilla to the chimpanzee, then to the first man. At the end of the tree, next to the Homo erectus, we see the first troponators. The species lives off of poisonous plants and animals. They grow stronger from the harsh toxins they ingest. The trop's main source of food are animals such as the rattlesnake. However, when animals are limited, they survive off of plants. Some of the plants they consume include the angel's trumpet and castor oil plant. The trops collect their food by swinging from tree to tree to spot their prey. They use their light stature to propel them at super speed to catch their prey. They then use their sharp claws to kill their predators and dig out the plants. The species lives in the tropical rainforest and sleeps hanging upside down in trees by their tails. They do not have any permanent residence. They sleep in different trees. This species is extremely independent and does not rely on others of the same species. They travel alone until they find a mate. Once a mate is found, they move on with their separate lives, leaving the female with the offspring. The trops are extremely territorial and do not spend time with others. When males come in contact with other males, they fight to the death over that territory. And finally, females of this species select the males based upon their size and how much territory they control. A sign of good genes include a vibrant green color and a long tail with sharp claws. Breaking news! Scientists have just discovered a new superhero species named the Penguin Volantis oculus in the tundra biome. The Penguin Volantis oculus is very different from the penguin we know today. It has wings to allow it to fly, an electric current covering its body to kill predators. It has developed grippy paws that allow for a non-slip walk on the ice, smooth, slimy skin that lets them leave and enter the water quickly, and the evolution of pupils, of deeper pupils, to allow them to have supervision. The penguin of Lantis oculus started its evolutionary history as the underwater penguin that we know today. It spent most of its life underwater, but it had to migrate to the land above the water due to the excess amount of predators that lived underwater. The land-dwelling penguin then began using its wings to fly. This penguin had then evolved to the penguin volentum. The penguin volentum was a penguin that had the ability to fly. It developed this mutation to quickly escape from predators and for quick transportation across the vast tundra biome in which it lives. The penguin volentum evolved into two different species, the penguin volantis lumen and the penguin volantis electrica. The penguin volantis lumen evolved into a flying penguin that could glow or light up. This species developed this mutation because they traveled in large groups and this mutation would help them communicate and find each other if they stray from their group. 
The penguin lantis electrica became a flying penguin with the ability of creating an electric current that can kill predators. The penguin lantis electrica evolved into the penguin lantis tenaki. The penguin lantis tenaki developed claws and paws that allowed them to walk across the ice without slipping, which made it easier to run away from predators and for faster transportation. The final evolved form of this penguin lantis is the penguin lantis oculus. This species developed deeper pupils, which allowed it to see farther distances. So now the penguin that was just discovered by scientists, which was the penguin lantis oculus, has the ability of flying, creating an electric current, supervision, and paws with claws. So the phylogenetic tree that was provided to us by the scientist who discovered this new species begins with the penguin that we know today at the bottom, which evolved into the penguin volentum, which has the ability to fly. Um, the penguin volentum split off into two species, one of them being the penguin volentis lumen, which can light up to communicate with other penguins and to prevent straying from the group. Um, the other species is the penguin volentis electrica, which can create an electric current to protect itself from predators. The penguin volantis electrica evolved into the penguin volantis tenaki, which has claws and paws which make it easier to walk and travel on the ice of the tundra. And this species evolved into the penguin volantis oculus, which has the ability of seeing really, really far distances across the tundra biome and has deeper pupils. So that is the final penguin that the scientists have just discovered. The penguin volantis oculus eats mostly seafood like shrimp, fish, squid, krill, and crustaceans. Their location, climate, and size only allows it to eat the small sized seafood that live in the saltwater masses near the tundra. So the penguin volantis oculus actually collects food by jumping or sliding into the water and using their beak to gather krill or other fish. So their mouth has a series of spines that point down their throats so that when they catch the food it stays in their mouths. Um, they, never ha they never ever chew food because they have no teeth. Um, other than the spines that can hold the food in place. And this is really helpful when catching small foods like krill. So they can also use their sharp beak to collect all these small animals like krill and shrimp and other crustaceans. The penguin volantis oculus lives in the tundra, a vast biome covered in ice and a plethora of frozen permafrost. It's also surrounded by salt water, and this is where the scientists discovered and came upon these new species. Um, to adapt to the salt water surrounding the tundra, the penguin volantis oculus drinks the salt water, and they have a special gland in their bodies that takes the salt out of the water they drink and filters it out of the grooves in their bill. The penguin volantis oculus is a very social species. They travel in large groups, and they also feed and breed in these same groups. Um, the large group protects the penguin volantis oculus from predators like sharks, killer whales, seals in the water, and then polar bears on the ice of the tundra. And group living also provides better care for their young and protection against the cold. So there are two groups in their social structure, the family level and the large group level. So the family level includes the parents and their offspring, and the offspring are taken care of and protected from other penguins. In the large group level, um, they defend the whole group and communicate with the whole group when they migrate or when there is imminent danger. In the tundra biome of the penguin ventus oculus, most of the other species around are either its predators or its prey. So the only interactions it has are escaping from predators and capturing prey, just this predator and prey interaction. So for example, the polar bear is another species that lives on the ice of the tundra, but they see the penguin volantis oculus as prey. So um, they're always trying to, so the penguin volantis oculus is always trying to avoid them and other predators in the tundra. They also enter, the penguin volantis oculus also enters the community of underwater seafood species like shrimp and krill to get food. When the penguin volantis oculus mates, the males show a display of their strength by puffing up their feathers and then they race. So in this race, they use their wings, paws, and underwater abilities, and the males will race among other males to compete for a female's attention. So the winners of the in-air, on-land, and underwater races will be recognized as the most elite males and will find a mate quite easily.